What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm James Wedmore. And I'm Jilly Cedeno. And this is the Mind Your Business Podcast, a show where we help you think like a successful entrepreneur so you can step into becoming a successful entrepreneur. Hi, I'm James Wedmore, and with 13 years online, I've built my business to over $9 million in sales per year. And this is the first non-business business podcast that shows you how to apply the principles of spirituality, energy, and mindset to create true and lasting success all from the inside out. This is the Mind Your Business Podcast. And on last episode, we started a fantabulous discussion, thanks to Shelly Carney, shout out to Shelly, about the 12 lessons that I have learned about life, this little thing called life, that I didn't really learn in school. Things that have helped me live a more enriched life, things that have helped me grow um, and find more happiness and more joy and have life just work. Mm -hmm. You know, like, is life working? You work in life or is life working you? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we shared six last week. If you haven't, uh, you should start there. We've gone over the first six of 12 life lessons that I learned that I did not learn in school. The first one being no one's coming to save you. Life lesson number two, life is happening for you, not to you. Number three, you are here for a reason. You have purpose, law of, dhar law of dharma. Number four, happiness is the way, not the destination. Number five, you are your word and you create your world with your word. And number six, don't take yourself too darn seriously. Yeah, and did you try one on? Yeah, are you, yeah, I knew that already. Uh, you know, I think everyone's just trying to fill their head with more stuff and then until they get overwhelmed. But um, that's not gonna do you very good here, okay? These are all lessons that I learned through my own experiences too. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what the whole point is. That's what we talked about in the last episode. So we've got six more for you to go through today. So I do hope you listen to that first episode first before we get into it. Today, we're going to jump right into it right now. So we're ready to go. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. Life lesson number seven. Karma is real. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Karma's a bitch. Uh, you hear a lot about karma. It's thrown around a lot. And um, there's a lot of definitions. I think we can go into a whole world of karma and, and what it is, um, you know, in the most simple, uh, you know, definition, it can be stated as like the law of action and reaction, mm -hmm. getting what you give, reaping what you sow. This idea of like life being a boomerang brings into the idea of life being a mirror. Yeah. My dad used to say good things happen to good people. Yeah. And you could sit there and say, well, why do bad things happen to, to, to good people and good things happen to bad people? And you can get, we can get into this massive philosophical discussion here. And that's not the point. It's like, stop looking for evidence to the contrary here. Right. Because, um, you know, who's calling it bad in the first place? Mm -hmm. How many of things that were bad at the time that you labeled it bad has been some of the best things that ever happened to you? Every single time for me. Like the time that I got, I told the story, right? Where... I got fired or dumped by a business partner and was just left hanging after I built this super successful business in like three months. And just like, oh, I don't need you anymore. Thanks. What <laughs> the heck? That was the best thing that ever happened to me because I wouldn't have started my own stuff. Right. You know, so who's to say it's bad? Mm -hmm. It's all a matter of interpretation. So, so many people, some of, um, you know, and obviously like we, we, we're all going to experience pain and loss and tragedy. Like it's, it's going to be hard for most of us to avoid that in our life. So it's a part of life, right? It's a part of it, but you get to choose how you respond to it, what you make of those situations, how they define you and what you learn and grow from those. You know what I mean? And so it isn't to me about a moralistic conversation, mm -hmm. but it can be more of like just an energy, you know, like what's the type of energy that we're putting out versus receiving. It can go into that exchange of, of energy. It can go into that cause and effect. Like, for example, if you're the type of person that doesn't like helping people and you're always taking and you're always receiving and you're always in the gimme, 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 gimme energy, 
chances are um, you're not going to be very, get really good at receiving. Yeah. You're not going to receive very much, you know, even when you get into like business terms, like the law of compensation, um, you know, th- we have these concepts and, and, and principles where like you're, you're, uh, paid in, in proportion to how much you give to the world, the value you deliver, mm-hmm. how much you put out there. Um, I find this all under the umbrella and vein of, of karma. Or what about like one that I see is someone that is constantly like returning or refunding things. Yeah. I, then... I mean, I, I see it all like it's, it's a mirror, right? It's yeah. like how you treat other businesses, how you are as a customer is chances are is the type of customer you're going to attract. Yeah. Right? Be the customer you wish to see in the world. Absolutely. <laughs> or in your business. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, that's that, that's how I'm looking at this. Absolutely. The other thing is too, is like there are people out there that hurt other people. Like they want to take others down. They want to hurt others. They want to, they say bad things that, that, that boomerangs. Mm-hmm. People start saying bad things to them. They start hurting themselves. They start taking themselves down. That's, this is law folks. Yeah. And I've seen this play out so many times that I'm just saying, you're asking me lesson to learn. I learned that karma is freaking real. This isn't some like lady karma idea, like fun, you know, no, it's, it's freaking real. The problem why it's hard to see it's real is because it's not instant all the time, even though we joke Sometimes it's like, instant is. karma. <laughs> like when I tease Jilly and then I like stub my toe the next <laughs> second, she's like instant karma, you know, but this could play out over lifetimes. This could play out over decades, mm-hmm. months, years, generations. Generation. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I've seen examples of it though. I have freaking seen examples and I'm like, whoa, karma's real. So what do you do with that information? Here's what you do with that information. This is how I put that lesson in action. I'm always mindful of who I am in the world for other people and what I'm putting out. And if what I'm putting out is not what I want to receive, I change that as fast as I can. And I can clean that up too with people. But I want to be more of what I want. I want to, I want to be the gift that I want to receive. And that doesn't need to be hard. That doesn't need to take effort. That just needs to be like, I want to be a giving person. I want to be a kind person. I want to offer love. I want to offer support. I want to offer advice. I want to offer help. And I want to be and give nothing but positive out in the world. Not because someone told me if you do that, you'll get it back. But at the same time, it's nice to know that. <laughs> but do it do it without the attachment. Do it without, oh, I'm only doing it so that someone will give something in return. But it is that like reciprocity. It starts right. to bring about the, the I need conversation. But, I feel like because like karma can't lie either. So it's yeah. like if you're doing it for well, the wrong reasons. You can't, reason, you can't just... <laughs> right. You can't lie to the universe. Right, like exactly. you, think, you think you're smarter and you can outsmart. Yeah. No. So... To me, it's really simple. It's just like I, I, I'm intentional about what I put out. And, you know, unless I want negativity in my life, I'm not going to put negativity out there. And it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be, oh, good person, bad person. We are an entire array of things with up that's up for interpretation and opinions. You know, there's things I've done that people say that's so bad. And then there's been people that say like, good, you stuck up for yourself. Right. You know what I mean? It's so like, who's to say? Yep. You? You? You really? You? You're the... The answer to, you know, you know the truth? No. There's so much that's up to perspective, interpretation, and we don't need to get into a moral, philosophical, endless debate that has no clear ending of like, who is a good person? Are we inherently good? What percentage are good? Because like, for example, you say, well, what's an example of someone who's a bad person? Well, someone who lies. Really? You think anyone here on this show listening has never lied before? You've all told a lie, even if it was to like not hurt someone's feelings Mm -hmm. or because you didn't want to, reveal certain information about an area of your life or because you're even just keeping a secret about somebody. You lied. We've all lied. So does that make you a bad person? Right. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, 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 it we don't have to go there is mm-hmm. what I'm, is I'm basically saying. I'm saying we can just look at it in terms of the idea of the energy that goes out is, is what comes in back in. And so be more intentional about the energy you put out. Let other people, you know, but, but it, it, you know, then you get into the whole principle thing, but it's the principle of it. You know, so, so someone attacks you, so you have to attack back. Or they're mean to you, so you got to be mean back. It's because like, it's a principle. They shouldn't have to do that. Like, like road rage and stuff like that, right? And I've had road rage, you know? It's like, they need to be told what's wrong. It's like, okay, but what does that do for you? Like, right. I, I didn't know you were the judge, jury, and executioner of traffic, you know, in <laughs> Southern California, police. the yeah. traffic police. You know what I mean? It's like, let them, that's their life, their path. You don't know what they're going through. 
let them be you, them, and then you be you, and let's move on with our life and not let it ruin your day. So I want I've learned so many times and just can't ignore it. Karma's real. There you go. Number one, done for today. Well, number seven. Life lesson number eight. Oh, this is so good. Your inner world creates your outer world. Wow. So much. Um, we don't experience objective reality. This has been proven by science and quantum physics. What we experience is a reality that has been filtered and distorted through what we could use as a metaphor, as a filter or a lens. So we experience a version of reality. And that's really what we react to is our version of reality. And our inner world, our inner state, how we feel, right? Our physiology, our thoughts are creating and generating that lens and perspective um, 24-7. And we're reacting so much to that. And then that um, influences uh, our external world. So like there was an episode from How I Met Your Mother. Great show, by the way. Where they they call it like shattering the glass. Did you ever see that show? Uh, not, I mean, not specifically that episode per se, but I've seen the show. So they would talk about like people they were dating. And then there was like something they did. You know, when you're like in that phase of like, wow, they're perfect, like honeymoon phase, like you've just fallen in love and love is blind, that kind of whole thing. And then all of a sudden someone points out, what's well, like, yeah, but do you see how they eat food? <laughs> and then as soon as that happens, they'd have this sound effect of like glass shattering. And then they can't help but see that person through that lens then. Mm. So, and it just changes their entire experience of that person. So this is what we're talking about here. Before they couldn't see it, and how they couldn't see it so that it, it, it affected their experience of that person and how that person occurred for them. And then the moment the glass shattered, they saw them a completely different way. But that person was always that way. They always had that weird habit or quirk or funny thing, but they didn't see it before. And now they see it, right? So we're always filtering, distorting, and you know, twisting, deleting, generalizing our view of the world. And that affects what we experience. What we experience and see, therefore, affects your state. Your state affects which actions you take, which choices you make, you know, decisions, and the quality of actions, which obviously ultimately affect your results. It's kind of like how you can wake up one morning and it's perfectly fine. You know, birds are chirping, sun's out, and then all of a sudden something happens and you've now labeled that you have a bad day or a bad morning. And then the bad morning turns into a mm -hmm. bad day. Mm -hmm. A bad day turns into a bad week mm -hmm. just because you're focusing on the, the bad. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why I included this and why this is so important is most people spend their lives looking at outside to the world. This is living from the inside out, which means nothing outside affects your internal world. But your internal world is like a projector that creates the hologram of life that you see. Right? So most people spend their entire lives looking at the 3D and going, I don't like this, I don't like this, this sucks, get rid of this, and they try to change this, change that, change that, then I'll be happy, and they condition that happiness. And they're doing everything to try to change their outer world so that their inner world will change. And that's living from the outside in. Everything on the outside affects your state, outside in, that's reactive, and out of the driver's seat. You're not the author anymore. You're just the bag in the wind. Let me change this. Let me change this. External, external, external. And you do it. You change it, but nothing changes. Right. And you just find more things that you don't like. You take your crap with you wherever yeah. you go. You hate your job. So you go to another job. Why do you hate your jobs? Like my boss was so controlling. You get another job. What do you know? You got another controlling boss or maybe it's a manager now or someone different. Or maybe now you're in a relationship that's very controlling. You're like, I'm taking my crap with me wherever I go because you change your outer world. Not your inner world, but it's your inner world that's creating your outer world. Mm -hmm. You take your shit with you wherever you go. But when you start to look within and begin to change from within, change the inside, the outside changes. This is why Wayne, the late Wayne Dyer said, change the things that the way you look at things and the things that you look at change. And this is why you say your business is a direct reflection of you, right? The same, same a, exact this thing. A huge, that's a huge piece mm -hmm. of it. I also see, say is how you see your business mm -hmm. determines what's possible. 
So your lens, your view, your perspective, your beliefs about whatever it is, business, money, success, sales, is what is creating the result and outcome you have in your life. For example, if you see a crowded marketplace, if you see oversaturated, if you see no room for me, what type of, that's, that's your inner world projecting that. No, no, that's what I see. It's like, no, you're experiencing that through a lens or filter. Because let me tell you, I've been doing this for 15 years. People have been saying for years, like over 10 years, oh, fitness business is oversaturated. Yet over 10 years, I've seen so many millionaire marketers and successful businesses get created. So while you saw oversaturated, it's done, no room for me, someone else said, I see something that, that, no, that everyone misses. Mm-hmm. I see opportunity, I see win, and they went for it. So how you see business, how you see marketing, how you see your, your market, your niche, yourself, in the context of business, sales, marketing, whatever, will determine what's possible for you. Change the way you see the things that you see. We'll just keep it to business, and those things will change. Mm-hmm. I don't see, I don't think oversaturation exists. I see market saturation. I see, I'm sorry, market sophistication, not market saturation. I don't see, there's no room. I see more advanced market requires more advanced messaging. That's a big difference. Huge. If you didn't get that, you got to re-listen to that because that's huge. But your inner world is what creates your outer world. Right. And is whatever is happening in your outer world that's not part of your circumstances can you stay calm? Can you stay centered? Can right. you stay true to right. what you know is possible and what your truth is? Or are you just letting everything else freak you out? When you're letting, let's, let's go there for a second, is when you are, when you're letting the external world, you know, drive your state and how you feel all the time. And look, okay, I get it. It's, it's life is, you get out, you fall off the horse. It's okay. But here's what's happening. Um, you're, you're reacting to the feeling. I'm sorry, your feeling is the, is, is what you're feeling, but you're reacting to the, your thinking, uh, to the situation rather than the situation as, as what it is. When you get immensely present and accept what is, you will notice such a discharge, freedom, and a bringing back of your personal power. It's unbelievable. When you can accept what is, uh, the, to the degree in which you s- accept your current situation as this is what it is, I accept it, is the degree in which you have the power to do something about it. But most people are free when you're freaking out and you're upset, you're like, oh my God, this happened. What you're doing is you're in a disempowered, listen to that, disempowered state means I'm given my power away. The reason you've given your power away or what has caused you to give your power away is your inability to accept it. You are resisting what is. In other words, you're using your power to push away what is. Mm. Push it away, but you cannot push away what is because what is, is what is. So it's a complete waste of personal power. Push this thing away, get away. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it. It doesn't matter if you don't want to look at it. It doesn't matter if you want to push it away. It ain't going anywhere. And you got to deal with what is. And when you accept it, and then we start to apply the other lessons that James has been sharing here, like this is happening for you. That makes it easier to accept it. Mm Mm-hmm. All that wasted energy that was going to pushing away comes flooding back to you. And instead of wasting it, trying to change it, hide it, or resist it, you get to use that power. You get to use that energy to create something new, to learn something new, to elevate, to transform what is. And that is so powerful. But that's an inner world process, my friends. This is the inner world. Everything always has, is now, and always will be okay. And what a beautiful place to, to be. So let's go on to life lesson number nine. Oh, we're getting to a good one. Here's what I've learned. Anything's possible. 100% of the time. 100% of the time. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Um, look, uh, so many people are not getting what they want and then say it's not possible for two reasons and two reasons alone. They don't believe it 
So I mean, belief is also an internal process. It's a choice to believe it or not. Or they're unwilling, this is so huge, unwilling to give, be, or do what it takes. That's it. That's all it comes down to. So it's not that it is impossible. It's that you're unwilling to let go of what's no longer serving you. You're unwilling to give what it takes. You're unwilling to be what it takes, or you're unwilling to do what it takes. Mm. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. It means you're not willing to do what it takes. Or you just don't believe it, which is part of letting go of, you know, obviously that's step one. The thing that you create in your mind, I desire this thing, the first thing it requires is your 100% unwavering faith. It is always possible, whatever it is that you desire. Quantum physics tells us this. It's science that if the thought form was created within you, like, oh, I really want to do this. Oh, wow. I want to do this. The desire, the thought, it is simultaneously created its probability of existence, which means it's already possible. You think the thought, you've created a timeline, a version of reality in which it exists. Which means, why would you waste any time trying to believe it or not? <laughs> it, it's like, do you, do you have trouble believing the, the iPhone that you're listening to this on? Why not? Well, because I see it. Okay. We can get into a whole crazy world of like, how do you know that the, what you see is real? Mm. What's real, man? <laughs> I don't know, man. I see it, but is it real? It's 99.9999% empty space. So what if you could translate or you know superimpose the same ideology that if you thought it, it exists in a probability of existence. You have to kind of dive into the world of quantum physics as we're not really going to do here, um, but it exists. You have to collapse that timeline to make it the dominant timeline that you experience in this reality and that will take something of you, but that doesn't mean it isn't possible. It's always possible. There's always a way. Always. Always. Yeah, there's no sense in shutting down possibility when you know you now know for a fact, because of science, it's always possible. Yep. Let's look at it this way, too. When you don't believe the thing that you want is possible, you're not going to do what it takes mm. to make it happen. But w it's not that you don't believe that the thing you want is not po is not possible. Like, I don't think it's possible. What you're believing in is the future of not getting it. So you've put your, un when you're in fear, like, oh, I don't believe it's possible. You have belief and faith. You're just putting it into a different future that is not the one that you wanted or intended. So you always, does that make sense? Yeah. You always have unwavering faith you always have belief and a sense of possibility it's just when when it's not how it feels like good it's because it's for a future you don't want yeah why is failure more possible than success exactly it's like <laughs> wait a second you've demonstrated so well your belief in that everything's going to go wrong All right you know you're so you're you're so certain of how the future is going to go you have such a sense of cockiness if i will that you know how things are going to play out you know which is just a lot of hubris if you tell if you're asking me to be like wow you just so know it's not going to work out you're so confident that you know how it's going to go you might as well take that same level of certainty you have of it not going well and apply it to something you actually want mm -hmm. there's no difference it's no difference yeah. except one is really awesome and the other one kind of sucks <laughs> yeah I, I hope that makes sense anything is possible Right. Just see the other lessons if you get stuck. Right. <laughs> yeah. And not see a lesson, lessons one through 11. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on to life lesson number 10. This is a biggie. Is recognizing that the past does not exist. This one's a little mind blowing. Yeah. This one's a little mind blowing because when you, when you create a new relationship with the past, your entire life changes. Um, you know, we can all agree as fact that the past does not exist in 3D reality. You cannot see it. I'm trying to touch it. Oh. <laughs> trying to grab it behind me. <laughs> you cannot see it. You can't touch it. You cannot feel it. You cannot put it in a wheelbarrow. You can't put it in your pocket. It does not exist. We perpetuate it or take it with us through our memories, our emotions, and our meanings. And when we can create a new relationship with the past, I think our life can radically transform. So here's the most important thing. Your past is the experiences that you've had. And we want to learn 
from our past. Mm -hmm. It's there to be our teacher. Our experiences that happened are there to teach us things, right? Um, but for most of us and for a good portion of my life, the past is what drives us. It's what controls us because the things that happen, good and bad, we place a meaning or interpretation on them. And you've heard me say, nothing means anything except the meaning you give it. There is no inherent meaning to the events, circumstances, and situations that happen. But then the part of you that's happening on an unconscious level, can't, can't, just, it has to mean something. Why did this happen? What's the question we ask from two years old? Why, 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 why? That's the meaning searching question. Why? It's like, well, I have to go to work today, honey. Why? Why? Because I have a job. Why? why? Because, <laughs> because I need money. Why? Because we have bills. Why? Because it pays for the things that we have here at the house to take. Why? Right? And it's meaning, meaning, meaning. It's like, because I said so. <laughs> shut up. Right? Okay. So we, we're searching. We're constantly searching to place meaning on all of the things. And we choose that meaning, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And so, you know, let's use like an overly simplistic example where this happens. So something happens where you like touch a hot stove for the first time and you experience pain through burn. Your, your hand gets burned. So you touch that hot stove, ow. And so then there's this kind of like interpretation and like, okay, this is hot. Hot things hurt. Don't touch hot stoves. That's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's can really inform you. But then we have other experiences like the first time we were called on on class and we said something and everyone laughed at us and we feel a different type of hurt, like shame, embarrassment. ridicule, embarrassment. And we do the same thing. Don't speak up. Yeah. Don't share. I have stage fright. Yeah. And then we put that into our future and, mm -hmm. and it develops a stage fright and not speaking up, not speaking our truth. And we've, we are driven by our past. Yeah. Procrastinating that podcast. But the stove, a hot stove is always going to be hot mm -hmm. and it's always going to burn when you put your bare hand, bare skin on the stove. But as a little child, and we still do this as an adult, we stay speaking up or sharing my opinion or talking or having attention on me is always going to hurt. Mm -hmm. And we're using the past, which is in the past to inform and create our future. Yeah. And I like to equate this like your life is a journey. You're on this journey. You're taking one step at a time. And these situations happen in our life situations. We could call like, you know, this can be traumatic experiences, small, you know, T trauma where something happens. We didn't like how it went. And every single one of those is like picking up a little rock or a boulder, uh, uh you know, not a boulder boulder, but like a good size rock, mm -hmm. like a baseball. And you put that rock into your bag and you walk along and you pick up another and you put it in your bag. And as you go through life and have these experiences and a lot of these reinforce previous stories and meanings, like, see, this is what happens when I speak up. See, this is what happens when I do my first Facebook Live. See, this is what happens when I tell people I'm starting a business. See, 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 evidence, reinforcement, more proof that, you know, this is, this is the way the world is. And we put all those into our bag. And what happens the longer we go through life and the more things we put in that bag, life becomes heavier. We become slower. We become the opposite of feeling lighter. We, be, we become heavier, mm -hmm. more lethargic. It's almost like you're stuck in uh, quicksand. Try, you can't, every, every inch you get up, you hold two down. It is so heavy. Mm -hmm. Life is no longer in, in technicolor. It's in black and white. It's dull. It's dark. Two-sided. And in any moment, what we forget is time for you to remember is at any moment in your life, no matter what you've gone through and no matter what age, you can take that heavy bag of rocks and you can notice how good it feels. That feeling of like release and relief when you put that bag down and you leave it behind you, when you leave the past behind you. And I want to try a quick exercise for you guys so you can get an experience of that. Now, if you're driving or not, uh, or driving or operating like a crane or something, heavy machinery, don't do this right now. But you can do this at any time. And it's the most simple exercise. And I do this all the time with my clients. So 
it's, I have no formal way of doing it other than do it the way that works for you and then keep practicing this. So I want you to just close your eyes for a moment and see if you can kind of get to a neutral space, maybe, you know, calm your mental brainwave states down, maybe get them down to a little bit more of a theta brainwave state. And that helps when you, you know, take a slower, deeper breath or two. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes. Not yet, but in a moment. That's why you can't do this while you're driving. And the trick here is to see how well you can convince your brain that when you open your eyes, you're going to imagine opening your eyes like you're seeing the world for the first time. Like you're stepping into this body and this life as if you were born into this moment. Open your eyes right now, see the world for the first time, born into this moment. This is your first moment on the planet. And notice how that feels. Now for most of you, if you did that, what happens is you get about a nanosecond, about a millisecond of almost feeling like a little bit of lightness, a little bit of, whoo, what was that? We've had people say, I see things brighter, mm -hmm more color, lighter, freer, and then like a second goes by and back to where life was. <laughs> and if you could begin to do that and pulse into more of that, then you would have the evidence right there of how much your past you take with you. And you're not taking the past with you because the past doesn't exist. What you're taking with you are the interpretations, the meanings that... Um, you created that got created from the past that are trying to protect you. You know, like I can't speak up. Mm -hmm. I can't share. I can't be in the spotlight. And we hold on to those things because we don't want to experience those things again. I don't want to experience that shame, that embarrassment, and that disappointment, you know, and, um, we all do this. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can recreate a new empowering relationship with our past and our future, the more we can recognize how much we are trying to live into a future or avoid a future that was our past, the more we are free to create a whole new future where we are unencumbered by those fears and not, a, not operating from an avoidance of uncomfortable emotions. I hope this one makes sense because this is a biggie. It's easy. We could do a whole series on this. But Yeah, that was really good. Okay, let's move on to number 11. I, we did an entire episode for you. We're going to link it up in the show notes. I have no idea what episode it is, but it was very recent about the idea of you need to let go to let in. Mm. Life is about letting in more. People want more, whether it's experiences or people or things, it does not matter, but there is a prerequisite for that, and that is the letting go. It's like m the manifestation idea of creating a void, a vacuum, a, a clearing, an empty space to allow something to come in. Right. If there's no room, don't expect it to come in. So people don't do that. They hold on. They hold on to what's certain and familiar, unwilling to change, but then they want something new and you're full. You're all cluttered. Yeah. <laughs> and it's this idea of, you've heard this a gajillion times, all these cliches have so much truth to them. One door has to close for another to open. But people are saying, well, let's let this new door open. Then I'll close that door. Life yeah. doesn't happen that way. That's where faith comes in. That's where trust comes in. I'm going to have faith and trust that when I let go of this, when I close this door, something new will present itself. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. That really, really, really is. So you have to be willing to let go. I, I did a whole episode on this. We'll link this up where you can go really deeper on this. Things I've let go in my life that has let in so much more richness. Oh my goodness. And I feel like today, the way I grow, people say, like, wow, you've grown so much. It's a process of letting go. Outgrowing, letting go of what no longer serves you, old ways of beings, beliefs, stories, creating space for something new. Yeah, and we see this in some of our most successful clients as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this show this showing up every every day, you know, like people who like have a fear of failure but still want success. It's like you you can't you have to let go of that fear of failure, rejection, the no, to let in the success first. Right. People are conditioning it and they're like, well, uh, let me get some proof and some success first and then I'll let go of that. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'll have faith once I have evidence and proof. Um, then what would you need the faith for? So you have to <laughs> let go of the fear to let in, right? Um, 
you know, we've had, we've had examples of, you know, people that just great reframe around like refunds and yeah. stuff like that, where someone has had a bad client, nasty client, they refunded or they decided to let, give them their money back. And when they finally let go of that client, I know a lot of you guys hear about this. Yeah. example. <laughs> they finally let go of that client or student, like four new amazing people came in yeah, and replaced like it. Yeah, like there's four soul aligned clients, yeah, you know. Exactly. So you have to let in, uh, sorry, let go in order to let in and you always have to let go first. Mm -hmm. That's a biggie. All right, let's go to our last one. Whew. This is a big one too. Life lesson number 12. I kind of doubled these up. Fear is your worst advisor and death is your greatest teacher. Mm. So, uh, fear is your worst advisor. Again, fear, we've talked about this before. Fear is this internal state you have when you believe that an unwanted future, unwanted future is bound to happen. That's what you're afraid of. Something in the future that you don't want to have happen is going to happen and you think that's what's going to happen. So you're totally afraid. I'm not talking about, you know, like physical danger. I'm talking about fear in your business and, and stuff like that, right? Like it's a failed launch or lose money and all that type of stuff. That's a future a particular future that you're starting to live into and it's causing you to feel a certain way in the present. I think the biggest thing here is so many people are afraid of so many different futures oh, all yeah. at once. Oh yeah. So then we let fear be our advisor and mm -hmm. inform our decisions, mm -hmm. our actions, and uh, you're, then you're, you're acting from the heels. Survival, avoidance, maintenance. Preventative. Preventative. Uh, uh, pres preserving mm -hmm. type energy that doesn't create success. That doesn't create breakthroughs, you know, and when everything you're trying to do is just, I'm trying not to risk it. I'm trying to hold on. That doesn't create the extraordinary. That doesn't have you, uh, operating on all cylinders, if you will. Right. Because you get what you focus on. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the energy of fear, you're in the energy of the thing you don't want. And that's what you attract into your life. It's really as simple as that. Fear, my friends, is your worst advisor. So you really say, what is fear informing? What is fear's choice? What is fear in telling me to do here? And just do the opposite. <laughs> I mean. Simple as that. If I had if I had no fear, if I was fearless, if I had all the confidence in the world, if I knew without a shadow of a doubt, I have absolute belief and certainty, what would I do? What decision would I make? What action would I take? How would I show up? And you'll see that that, is always the right decision, but you know, don't take my word for it. Yeah. Those are some powerful questions versus like, what's going to go wrong or yeah. what do I have to look out for? Yep. And then why this, I put these together is this, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to the end of my life and see that I have regrets. And I would say that every regret is a regret based in fear. I didn't do something that I truly wanted to do because I was afraid of what would happen. And that's why I connect these together because anytime I could find myself in any type of fear, I go out to the end of my life and see I'm already 37 and a few months, you know, almost 37 and a half, how fast life goes and it could be over tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This could be it. And death m gives you so much perspective and shows you how precious and short life is. And when you go out to that and you use death as your teacher, why would you want to get to the end of your life and have a life not lived, a life full of regret, a, a life full of wishing and hoping that you did something different, that you gave it your best, you gave it your all, that you you stepped into your greatness and and fulfilled your dharma and your purpose. You did what you know and you're right. Your heart was right. You, you spoke your truth. You, you, you did your thing. And, and die happy and at peace that you did that. And that's the greatest fear for me is to fear getting to the end of my life and say, I, I regret that I didn't do this thing. Mm -hmm. And that's the only fear that I want advising me, the fear of a life not lived. Yeah. And it's in that way, the death, the, 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 you know, finality and small fleetingness of life is what makes this so precious and we have it, all of experiences of this you know um in our lives we all have these amazing reminders of it all the time and um it when you use it as a teacher it invites you to live fully right now with no fear mm -hmm. with no regrets full out and you know it 
it's important to know that it's okay to, to have fear because you can't have courage without fear. True. It, you know, that's what courage is, is doing something despite fear. And that's what this is about. But is it informing your decisions? Is it saying, okay, then I won't. Yeah, or are you recognizing it? Right. That's why you hear, we say, it, I hear a bunch of people say it, feel the fear and, and do, do it, it anyway. Waste. I'm afraid. Therefore I must. Mm. The only fear I have would be to get to the end of my life and have my life be full of regrets. So that's been a big one. Don't, don't, do, don't listen to the advice of your fear, but use death as your greatest ally and your greatest teacher. Mm -hmm. It's there to teach you so much. 12 life lessons. I didn't learn that in school. <laughs> no, I didn't learn that until I met you. Uh, <laughs> Any of that. <laughs> yeah. And I went down all these routes and learned all these lessons because at the end of the day, as Jilly mentioned, your business is a reflection of you. Grow you and grow your business. And I've gone down all these routes of personal development and learning how to live a better life, a more extraordinary life. And that reflects out in my business. So I love sharing these things with you. You know, it's really funny. All these people say, oh, James is too woo-woo. Um, <laughs> or like, what does this have to do with business? And it's like, everything. Everything, you know? Because let's look at the opposite. You're, you're running a business and you're facing problems every day. Why has this always happened to me? You're running a business and you don't do what you love. You feel no sense of purpose or meaning. What does that give you? you you're running a business and you're miserable. You're unhappy. Why? People, people aren't attracted to that, so they're not going to work with you. You're running your business and you're unhappy. The people don't want to be around you with that. You're running your business and you say a bunch of things and you never do it. You keep breaking your word. Your word has no power, no worth. You never, you begin to distrust yourself. You don't believe in anything you say, but you're so stressed out all the time because you take yourself so seriously. Everything is do or die in this moment. You don't ever have fun and enjoy the beautiful parts of life. You don't see things like karma. So you don't really care about other people and what you put out there and don't really connect the dots and how it's coming right back to you until you can pay attention to that. You let everything in the outer world control how you feel and what you do. You're constantly reactive. If one thing changes on Facebook, you freak out. If a com quote unquote competitor does something differently, you start to do things differently and you live from the outside in. You stop believing that anything is possible. And, and, and the, the scope of what's possible gets smaller and smaller. And instead of taking more risk and having more faith, more of your life becomes more about how do I preserve, how do I survive, and how do I maintain? And as you go through all these things in life and you have all these experiences that build up, you add these disempowering meanings and, and, and interpretations that has your past begin to drive your future. And then you fill up. You fill up with how you think the world is, how it's supposed to be, the, your rules and models for the world, and you have no room to let anything else in because your hard drive's full. And then every day you operate from fear and you let fear drive your decisions. And then you get to the end of your life and you start to see how you showed up and what you did and what you didn't do. What do these life lessons have to do with business? Everything. This um, is how you get to run your life. Right. And I'm just thinking how imperative all of these lessons are to learn before you have a team or ASAP if you already have a team because these lessons, whether you know it or not, are ripple affecting through your team. Your community. Yeah. Your, your community. customers, mm -hmm. your clients get on it mm -hmm. and you don't need to have the same lessons as me or anything like that. Oh, I'm supposed to adopt these. No, but if any of these stood out to you as something that you maybe need a reminder on or a, a deeper lesson or need to start living a little bit more in your life, well, here you go. So, um, huge shout out, 
again to Shelly Carney for asking an extraordinary question that we turned into a two-part episode. It was a joy to reflect on these and really put these together in a way that I think will have a huge impact on you. Um, thank you to everybody for listening to this two-part episode. Um, and uh, please let us know on the Instagrams um, what type of impact or effect or what was your biggest takeaway, uh, lesson, insight, aha, or observation from this. We really appreciate that. And we've got more amazing episodes uh, coming your way. Can't wait. See you soon. Bye.